We're live, Francine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Francine Gilmer, and it is a pleasure to have you with us this evening to celebrate a day of remembrance. COVID-19 memorial service in conjunction with the national program originating in Washington, D.C. at 4.30, 5.30 Eastern. This program is presented to you as a service of the Connection Committee of Alpha Delta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Following the words of the noted Maya Angelou, she says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Losing loved ones has never been easy. Our emotions range from high to extra high when our loved one dies. The emptiness and the sense of loss we feel is sometimes unimaginable sometimes crippling, but it is comforting to know that others care. Words are often inadequate to relieve the pain one may feel, but we care. Our country is grappling with the loss of over 400,000 deaths attributed to COVID-19 since March the 1st. Approximately four Americans have died every five minutes. These numbers are astounding and difficult to comprehend. With family and friends all over the world, each of us are likely to know someone in that devastating statistic. We want each person tuned in to feel the love, to feel the support, to feel the concern, to feel the compassion, and feel hopeful for better days ahead. We are fortunate to join other cities and towns around the country in this service this evening. It is now my privilege to present Ms. Tawana Williams, who is the president of Alpha Delta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Following Ms. Williams, Mrs. Tanya Foreman will offer our meditation. Good evening. It is an honor for Alpha Delta Omega to participate in the COVID-19 memorial service in conjunction with the Presidential Inauguration Committee. During these yes, days, yes. we know that it's time for a celebration and hope, and we cannot ignore that unfortunately it's happening during the midst of a pandemic with so many Americans grieving the loss of family, friends, and neighbors. Unfortunately, we have lost over 400,000 Americans to COVID-19. It is important that we honor those who have died. We want to celebrate their life and the impact that they have, they have had on our lives and to those that they have touched. We also want to reflect on what has been one of the most challenging periods in this nation's history and renew our commitment to coming together to end this pandemic and rebuilding our nation. Thank you to the Connections Committee under the leadership of Sonia Mallory and Courtney Gates for planning this memorial service. Thank you to all the participants in this service. Please know that you are welcomed and we pray for you, your family, and this country. Welcome. You're muted. You're muted. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay, good evening. I am Tanya Foreman, a member of the Alpha Delta Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. First, giving all glory and honor to God, it is indeed a privilege to share this meditation with you this afternoon. As we reflect on the more than 400,000 lives lost due to COVID-19, and as we reflect on those things that have been imposed upon us, such as social distancing, masking, and all the other restrictions that have been placed on us, the thought that comes to my mind for this meditation is drawing closer to God during the time of pandemic. Today, we honor and commemorate those we lost to COVID-19. 
we reflect on the lives they lived and the love they gave. We will never forget them and we will always continue the work of their lives for that is our charge. We must remain strong and proudly carry the banner representing who they were. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we recognize that many of you have been impacted particularly hard. We know that some are experiencing difficulty, uncertainty, grief, and feelings of being overwhelmed. Today, we come together in unity to uplift and to show love, to share some good news. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a way of peace in the midst of the storm. Psalm 61, one and three says, hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Brothers and sisters, God is our rock. He is our firm foundation. He is our stability in an unstable world. But we have some work to do. We must first seek him and cry out to him and invite him into our lives for he loves us and he cares about what we're going through. Secondly, we must stay committed to him. This is no time for flip-flopping with indecisiveness. We must take charge. We must dwell within him by allowing his word to abide in us as we abide in his word. Psalm 91, one through three reads, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. This passage of scripture goes on to talk about when the terror comes by night and when the arrow flieth by day, that we will not be afraid because we are in the secret place of God. Brothers and sisters, in order to get to that secret place, we must go deeper into the word of God. We must embrace him. We must become immersed in him to understand how to get to that secret place. Now, once we get there, I assure you, there is peace that surpasses all understanding. Throughout your suffering, you'll have peace. There is everlasting joy and there is true love that only God can give. Psalm 16 and 11 reminds us that God will show us the path of life and that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. Finally, we can rest in him, having hope and increasing our faith. We don't have to stay in a posture of grief or sorrow. We can celebrate the lives of our beloved family and friends. We can continue to champion their cause. We can reflect the power and love of God toward each other. Please bow your heads with me and let us pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day, thanking you for the opportunity to share love and uplift and unity with the rest of this nation, asking for your divine protection for the rest of us, oh God, from this pandemic. We just thank you, Father, that light and love is what we want to exude to our community around us. We thank you for everyone on this panel and everyone under the sound of my voice. And we ask you to continue to encourage the hearts and the minds of those family members. I was gonna hook it up. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Foreman, for a very heartfelt meditation. Music is a universal medium that brings calm to a raging storm, that soothes headaches and heartaches, and it just centers our soul. Okay, there you go. Let's go. We are privileged to hear Ms. Tammy Bullock, a humble servant of Christ. 
thing, amazing grace. music that stirs the soul. And we hope brings some peace, some comfort to those who remember their loved ones tonight. 
It's now time to hear words of encouragement and hope from the Honorable Dr. Harold Love, Jr. Dr. Love is a minister of the Word of God, and he is a servant of the Nashville community. He represents House District 58, but his passion for helping extends beyond his noted boundaries. He is a member of Omega Sci-Fi fraternity, but more than that, he too is an humble servant of God. Representative Love. Thank you, Ms. Gilmore, Gilmer, and thank the uh, members of the Alpha Delta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority for the chance to come and speak to you today on this COVID-19 memorial uh, celebration and how much more we need to work on uh, hope is of course the central theme of tonight's uh, words of encouragement, having hope over despair. You know, opportunities are uniquely disguised as challenges. Uh, the opportunity to be more loving is often disguised in someone mistreating you. The opportunity to be more patient is often disguised by someone testing your patience. And so it is with the opportunity to hope. It is often disguised in suffering, pain, and even anguish. Last year uh, presented to us a very unique opportunity to hope again in the resilience of the human spirit. We remember our loved ones and friends whose death seemed to come too soon. We remember the pain of those who lost jobs or became unemployed. We remember the, all the uncertainty that we had around how school would be carried out. Uh, would children be able to learn the same capacity? And yet through it all, the resilience of the human spirit was able to shine through and remind us that we indeed are better together. Separate us from another and we cannot function properly. Living separate lives, we cannot overcome any obstacle. If we live separately, we would never have been able to make it out of what we came through and we won't make it through what we have to face going forward. But together, we know that we will not just survive, but we will come out declaring that we will not give up on each other, but instead we will work together as never before so that when we tell our children and grandchildren and our nieces and nephews about 2021, ours will be a story of triumph. We are inspired by generations that have gone before us because we have seen their resilience. We remember their stories about how they discovered their own resilient spirit and overcame many of the obstacles that they had to face in their own journey of hope over despair. As we reflect upon again, those whose lives have been lost to COVID-19, again, let us push forward to make sure that we respond accordingly to each other and support each other in every way that we can. Uh, I was told years ago about a story about a people who used to go to a special place and sing special songs and say special words and God would show up. Another generation was born that remembered the special place and the special words, but forgot the special songs, but God still showed up. Another generation was born that remembered the special place, but of course forgot the special words and forgot the special songs, but God still showed up. But then there came another generation that forgot the special place, forgot the special words and forgot the special songs. Difficulty came into their lives, but as they began to reflect upon what their grandparents used to do. They began to talk about a special place their grandparents used to go. They began to talk about special words that their grandparents used to say. They began to even talk about the special songs that their grandparents used to sing. And as they sat there and remembered what their grandparents had overcome, as they talked about and reveled in what their parents had overcome, as they reflected upon how a generation before them had overcome many obstacles, God showed up. Let us never forget how our ancestors overcame many obstacles. Let us never forget how we got to where we are today. Let us continue to work together.
Dr. Love was indeed reminding us of our ancestors and how God will show up no matter the circumstance, no matter. I do hope that we can get Dr. Love back. But in the meantime, in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, we know that without God, we could do nothing. Without him, our lives would fail. He's like a ship. Without him, he's like a ship without a sail. But we know that he will come through for us. We should never, never forget him. We should never, ever leave him behind. As Dr. Love was continuing his message to us, again, we can always look ahead at the hope that lies ahead. And we know that God is with us. We can invite him, or we cannot invite him. His will will be done. And we know that, and so we will move ahead with today's program in this memorial and say to Dr. Love, thank you. Thank you for preparing for us. Thank you for a message that will indeed rip our nation. As we continue, we want to pause for about just a few seconds and a moment of silence as we remember those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. Thank you. Ms. Mallory has prepared a video presentation for us and we will now enjoy that video. Ms. Mallory. Thank you. And again, thank you all for joining us today. We are, we're humbled by everyone attending, sharing in this national moment of unity and remembrance. And in so doing, we created something that we would love for you all to enjoy.
think we can end this ceremony to bed today by asking that each of you will light a candle in honor, in memoriam for these victims of COVID. I mentioned earlier that four, about almost four out of five people, four people, let's say, die every five minutes. And those are numbers. But these are the names and the faces of those that we loved dearly that have fallen victim. As you light your candle, as you show how you remember our loved ones, we hope that you will remember that Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha Delta Omega chapter members, we love you and we care. As we end this at 4.30, we ask that you will join the national program in Washington, DC. Find flags along the Lincoln uh, Memorial and they too will be observing those who lost their lives to the devastating disease of COVID-19. We thank you for joining us this evening. And I believe that concludes our program. Please join us here uh, for the live memorial. Thank you all. Thank you everyone who just agreed to contribute your time, your talent um, for this somber occasion. Thank you for helping us to honor the lives of those we've lost to COVID-19. Thank you everyone. And this will conclude our, our memorial. Thank you. Inspired our nation. She joins us this evening to honor those we have lost with that same hymn, Amazing Grace. I, I have to stop sharing. Thank you so much, Vice President-elect Harris. It is an honor to be here with you and with President-elect Biden. Working as a COVID nurse was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for the patients who are sick, it was heartbreaking for the families who couldn't be there with them. Do I need to stop? It was heartbreaking for those caring for them. But when I'm at work, I sing. It gives me strength during difficult times, and I believe it helps heal. So here is Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet. The sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Thank you, Lori. As I said to his eminence, as we were waiting to come in, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if there are any angels in heaven, they're all nurses. We know from our family experience what you do 
the courage and the pain you absorb for others. So thank you. Thank you. Your Eminence, Cardinal Gregory and Yolanda Adams, to heal, we must remember. It's hard sometimes to remember. But that's how we heal. It's important to do that as a nation. That's why we're here today. Between sundown and dusk, let us shine the lights in the darkness along the sacred pool of reflection and remember all whom we lost. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing, Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know that there's a God above, and all I've ever learned from love is how to shoot at someone who outdrew you. It's not a cry you hear at night. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you for those who have come this evening. Um, this definitely was a moving experience. Um, we continue to pray for those who are grieving, um, those who are sick. We pray for our future and our country. This concludes, this concludes our service.